Good evening. Welcome to the Yorktown Central School District Board of Education meeting for February 1st, 2016. Can I have a motion to go into executive session for the matters pertaining to the employment history of particular individual and contractual negotiations? So moved. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Can I have a motion to go back into public session? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good evening. Welcome to the Yorktown Central School District Board of Education meeting for February 1st, 2016. Can we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence for Brenda Sickling, a CTA at Crompon School, our armed forces, and those in our Yorktown Central School District who have lost loved ones. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Good evening. Um, welcome to one of our first budget se session of the budget season. We're going to open with public comment. Is there anybody wishing to speak? No. We will go right to Ralph. Good evening, everyone. Um, we are going to begin, as Mrs. Carbone stated, with a budget overview. And uh, Tom Cole, the Assistant Superintendent for Business, will present uh, the direction that we are going with uh, as we budget for the 2016-2017 school year. Tom. Thanks, Dr. Napolitano. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, welcome to the 2016-2017 budget season. Uh, this evening's presentation will focus on the major items that we are confronted with as we constructed the 2016-17 budget uh, that will be disseminated over the next five presentations so that the public may weigh in on any one of the topics. Uh, you've seen this chart before, and uh, you'll see it in every budget document that we present. The budget we propose is based, as always, on the whole child. Every aspect of our expenditures, staffing requirements, and support is created with an eye on how it will benefit the students in our school. The budget cycle for us begins in October. The administrators, directors, and supervisors prepare their submissions based on general guidance from the superintendent. Each section of the budget is reviewed by the central administrative team. Changes and modifications are made based on the information received from these individual administrators. Knowledge of new or existing mandates that may impact the budget are considered as well as changes in enrollment. There may be discussion about purchases of textbooks, equipment, or supplies that support changes in curriculum based on our own internal review cycles or common core requirements, for instance. In January, we typically meet with the Fiscal Advisory Committee to go over the status of the budget and the first look at our year-end estimates for the current operating year. Both of those items will help the committee advise the full board about how to approach the 2016-17 budget. We're beginning the budget presentation this evening with this general overview and we'll continue to present different elements of the budget over five more sessions as indicated on the left-hand side of this chart. Our presentations will culminate with the superintendent's presentation of the entire budget on the 28th of March. As we look at the creation of next year's budget, these are the primary drivers that we will deal with. The tax cap will be the major influence since this year's allowable tax levy growth will be near zero. Enrollment, as always, will dictate the levels of staffing and where that staffing needs to be located. Pension costs are driven by the state requirement for employers to contribute to the pension system. This year, those costs will go down significantly. Staffing, as I've said previously, is going to be predicated primarily on enrollment changes. Mandates will also have an impact. BOCES capital project costs are completed. This will result in a budgetary savings for 2016 and 17. Health insurance costs will go up based on premium increases and based on the depletion of the reserve we had in place over the last three budget cycles. Our cash reserves will play a, a critical part in tax reduction, tax cap compliance, and planning for future known expenditures. State aid will increase modestly next year. We'll get into the details of each of these elements as we continue along in the presentation. 
The document on the right of this chart is the New York State Comptroller issued allowances for tax levy growth for next year. The rate is different for municipalities and other entities because it's calculated based on the beginning of the fiscal year for each entity. School districts in New York State have a tax cap growth rate of 0.12% for next year. Based on that formula used to calculate the net levy growth allowance, Yorktown Central School District can expect a maximum levy increase of 0.32% or three-tenths of 1%. The superintendent's budget will comply with the tax cap. We will not seek to override that cap. However, as has been in the case in every year since the tax cap's inception, we will propose the use of fund balance to get in under, to get in under the cap allowance. Enrollment is expected to decline slightly kindergarten through 12th grade next year. We do forecast a very modest increase at the K through 5 level. We just do not have enough experience with the impact of full day kindergarten in place to be able to forecast the kindergarten level accurately. We are assuming a modest increase from the current year's levels. We've begun planning for future growth based on a new development that is due to come online in the next few years. The Bear Mountain Triangle will have 90 units in total. If the experience we have had with Crompon Crossing just down the road is extrapolated to this new development, we might expect as many as 175 or more new students. The full impact of that project is several years away. We also read in the local newspapers that new housing is proposed for Keir Street. The Yorktown apartments continue to pro produce new students in the current year. We expect that trend to continue into next year. Our planning for this expected growth will continue over the next two school years. Our staffing levels will be affected by the aforementioned enrollment numbers. We constantly assess the levels of staffing based on need. Every position that becomes vacant, whether by resignation or retirement, is reviewed for need. Sometimes the vacant position is eliminated, sometimes it is repurposed to fill a more pressing need. We expect at least six teacher retirements in 2016 and 17. There may well be some support staff retirements as well. All of the known retirements have been accounted for in the budget numbers. Any savings from those positions have been quantified. Members of our community may remember that we had a three-year obligation to pay $1.2 million to BOCES to pay for their capital projects. As a 1 18th owner of the BOCES facilities, Yorktown Central School District had a, a, a necessity to contribute to the cost of the repairs and upgrades. We chose to pay for our contribution, contribution using cash reserves. Over the last three years, a total of $1.2 million was included in the budget with an offsetting contribution from fund balance. This resulted in a $0 impact to the tax rate over that period of time. The final installment was paid in this current year. The savings year over year to the budget will be approximately $290,000. Our district is part of the Putnam Northern Westchester Health Insurance Consortium. It's a group of 14 school districts within our BOCES boundaries that pool together in an effort to secure lower cost insurance. Our experience over the last decade has been generally positive and our continued participation makes sense economically. Over the prior three years, the Board of Education has used money from the health insurance reserve to reduce the budget line for insurance and by consequence reduce taxes. The health insurance reserve has now been exhausted. In the budget for next year, your health in, uh, next year health insurance will increase by over $1 million. Half of that will be related to the depletion of the reserve, causing the cost in the budget to be reflected at a higher level. The balance of the increase will be due to premium increases. In total, the Board of Education has reduced taxpayers' obligations by nearly $2 million over the three-year period by using a health insurance reserve. Our cash reserves remain extraordinarily healthy. We continue to enjoy a standard and poor's AA rating, which allows us to borrow money at very low interest rates. When we discuss debt service in one of our subsequent presentations, you'll see that we've been able to take advantage of refinancings and low-cost borrowings, all the result of stable levels of cash reserves and coordinated management of the budget. We continue to fund a tax certiorari reserve as those tax challenges continue to flow into the district in large numbers. We also fund and utilize the pension cost reserve. We forecast that we will be able to maintain unrestricted fund balance at the maximum level allowable by law in the next school year. 
We will be asking the board to contribute cash reserves again in 2016 and 17 in an effort to comply with the tax cap allowance and again as a consequence reduce taxes. Based on the governor's proposed budget, we expect state aid to increase by approximately $250,000. The category of building aid will be up, but that increase will be offset by a decline in BOCES aid. The largest element to change in the latest proposal is the gap elimination adjustment. The gap adjustment was instituted by the state government soon after the financial crisis in 2008. By 2010, Albany was facing a multi-billion dollar budget fall. Uh, budget shortfall. One of the methods they chose to close that gap was to reduce each school district's share of state aid, that the gap elimination adjustment, or a euphemism for withholding money to schools. Since it was first introduced, Yorktown Central School District has had more than $11 million in aid withheld by the state. Next year's budget proposes to bring the annual reduction down from uh, further from last year. It will still leave nearly $760,000 withheld in state aid in 2016 and 17. Those are the major issues and uh, a brief overview of each one that we considered in the construction of the budget. We'll be glad to answer any questions you might have at this time. Thank you, Tom. Um, as always, we know how hard the administration works before they even present this part of the budget to us, so we thank you for it. Um, to start with questions. Mike, you want to start? You want to start with Cheryl? I'll start off with Cheryl. Do you have any questions? No. Tom? Well, first, a statement. I agree with you, Jackie. Ni nice job to, to Tom and the administration and the Financial Advisory Committee for bringing this, this budget in with a, such, a, such a low uh, tax increase. And that's really where my question is. You know, I see you mentioned a tax levy increase or an allowable levy increase of 0.32%. And how much was the, this budget going to generate in terms of levy increase? Uh, this budget will not ex this tax levy increase cannot exceed 0.32 percent. Right. So the question is, you know, I mean, most people are familiar with a 2 percent cap. So maybe you could just tell us why we're already down at 0.32 percent in terms of the cap. Sure. The, the legislation requires the use of um, an allowance increase factor uh, that is the lesser of 2 percent or the rate of inflation. And since ra the rate of inflation is less than 2 percent, that's the factor we have to use. This year, that factor is 0.12 percent or just over one-tenth of one percent. That's the allowable growth factor. Now, there are some exemptions and there are some allowances for uh, tax-based growth by school district. And once those, once you run through the formula the state provides, that 0.12 percent allowance factor spits out a 0.32 percent maximum levy increase for the Yorktown Central School District. So the 2% cap is no longer a 2% cap. Really. It's almost a 0% yeah. cap. Can you yes. just explain to people who go to the grocery store and go to buy things and everything has gone up, why the rate of inflation in New York State says is almost zero? Well, they don't include certain elements in their basket of inflation factors, food being one of them. So <laughs> it's not necessarily, uh, so for instance, that when we go to uh, negotiate transportation increases for next year and CPI is utilized, there's a different CPI factor for transportation because it takes into account the cost of commodities like oil and things of that nature, real life things that we all deal with, and those aren't always used in the state's calculation. Anthony? I'm good. Mike? Um, Tom, the um, health insurance reserve. You mentioned that we um, have utilized it over the prior three years to reduce costs and that it is going to be exhausted at the end of this year. Um, why is that? Well, we had, uh, we had a health insurance reserve that's been constituted in one form or another since about 2002. Uh, it was designed initially when they had um, instituted a new Government Accounting Standards Board opinion that we would have to fund retiree benefits on our financial statements. Now, subsequent to that, some years later, they determined that they didn't have to be funded, they just had to be reflected. But we put money aside to reflect our obligation to pay for retired people, or retired employees, uh, because we do pay portions of their premiums, uh, depending on when they retired, uh, the, the level of contribution will vary. The auditor about uh, three years ago indicated that um, uh, they, they weren't comfortable with that reserve remaining there and they would rather that we utilize that reserve and 
um, run it down to zero, which we did over a three-year period. Uh, the board graciously uh, agreed to contribute roughly $650,000 a year for three years to reduce the health insurance costs in the budget and by a result uh, reduce taxes by $650,000 a year. Uh, the 2015-16 budget is the last year that we are using that, those reserve monies. So in 2016 and 2017, the budget basis will increase by that $650,000 that we had been using to reduce it in previous years. So, <laughs> all right, so we set the money aside. The auditor told us we shouldn't keep it there, so now we've exhausted it and our costs go up a half a million dollars and we have to put that into our budget. Yes. Okay. Yes. Is that some, is, so now is that health insurance reserve something that is gone or is it something that we could reconstitute if we chose to? No, it's gone and, and we cannot use it again. We can't fund it anymore? No. Okay. Thanks. I actually have a related question okay. on, you know, what's the, what's the primary driver of the premium increases? Is it just more people we're funding? Is it just the general cost of health care going up or all of the above? It is the general cost of health care, but we, it's the collective experience of the eight of the 14 districts that make up the health insurance consortium, um, we pool our experience. So based on that, um, the cumulative effect, the level of reserves that they choose to, uh, to maintain in the consortium to meet the requirements for, um, uh, for the fund, all of that has an impact. Uh, but the, the half million dollar increase is on a $6.5 million health insurance obligation. So when you look at it in that sense, it's relatively benign relatively Relative. benign yes. relatively. okay um, Tom I have a question about the pension cost because we know we get a rate from the state which is whatever our contribution to the teacher retirement system is and it, we know that it went up significantly when the market took a dive and now it's slowly come back down again now the market's been in fluctuation this past year or so well and I know that the pension costs run several years behind that Will we find any kind of a rise, do you think, again in pension costs as this is happening or has something changed so that, that we, it's going to level out for us, do we think? I, I do believe that um, there will be an increase in the future, but that's usually phased in over three years. At one point, uh, Mike Bignani and myself tried to back into this formula that they use, and it's, all, it's almost impossible. It's very difficult to. But there seems to be a, about a three-year lag between the... Uh, the health of the uh, stock markets and, and, the, uh, and the level at which we contribute to the pension. Uh, just to give you an example, uh, we're looking at about 16.5% the current year, so 16.5 cents of every dollar in salary that's paid to employees is contributed by the school district to the pension fund. When I started here 16 years ago, it was less than four-tenths of 1%, but back then the stock market was booming and the fund was healthy and their assumptions were very aggressive and as you know after 2008 uh, and the crisis we found that a lot of pension funds were much too aggressive on their growth estimates New York State was no exception so um, their growth estimates are now more modest and more realistic and therefore contributions by the employers have to go up to fill the hole that used to be part of their more aggressive uh, uh, return analysis if you will but as the market is the market being in flux, does that mean in three years we might start to see our rates increase again, or, or it's have they leveled possible. that out? It's quite possible that I expect that the rates will go up at some point. But the board has allowed us to establish a pension reserve, so that in those years when it does go up significantly, we can use that reserve to temper the increase in the budget and to mod you know to modulate the tax rate, which we had done previously several years ago. We had asked whether or not you had wanted to uh, participate in the amortization of the pension costs because at the time they were skyrocketing. And thankfully, you rejected that approach and we used our cash reserves to uh, moderate the, the increases. I would expect that we would probably take a similar attack if those costs begin to climb again in future years. Okay, thank you. Any questions, anybody else? So our next, we, we will start out next week with athletics and co-curricular? That's correct. Okay. Um, and just the other, only other question is, when will we be posting these meetings online so the community can look if they have questions, concerns, comments? Um, the meeting dates are listed on the board 
the meeting dates are listed, but will we be putting the presentations up onto the onto the um, TV so that people can start to watch them? They'll go up after, but they will go up each week so that people will know. Can we do that, Patrice? Do you want to list on the website? The you just so people know when it when what what's going on that way you know just being transparent here. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sure. All right. Any other questions, comments? No. Okay. What are we moving on to? We are up to we have a personnel agenda. We have a. Um, Motion with recommendation of the superintendent, a motion that the following be approved. We have a resignation of Laura Basili, a reading teacher, a resignation for the purposes of retirement of Kathleen McNamee, a CTA, who's been with us 28 years, administrative leaves employee 1047, employee 3881, um, our leaves, and another, we are sadly, Brenda Sickling passed away. Um, then motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Did you want to say anything? Yeah. So, of course, we uh, extend our mm -hmm. condolences to the Sickling children and uh, to Mr. Sickling. Uh, Brenda was a long standing CTA and very much loved and appreciated. And all she really wanted to do was she was very anxious to return to work and hoped that she would be able to come back. And we were deeply saddened to hear this news. Uh, her children did attend our school, so we we're also acquainted with the boys, particularly who are recent graduates, a 24-year-old and a 22-year-old, both baseball players. So condolences to them. Uh, we um, are grateful for uh, Kathy McNamee's years of service. Uh, we're uh, happy that she'll have a new beginning, and she's looking forward to her retirement. So uh, congratulations to Kathy, and we thank Laura Basili for her uh, years of service as a reading teacher in our school district. Terrific. Okay. Uh, we are up to board <coughs> comment. Cheryl? Anything? I don't have anything. Nope, no, I'm good. Anything? Good. Mike? No. I got nothing either. Oh, thank goodness for warm weather. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> it's been beautiful. Anything, Ralph Tom Florence? No, I think we're all set. Okay. Public comment, anybody wishing to speak? No. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs>